I think we're live. It looks like we yeah, are live. <laughs> it's so exciting. <laughs> hey, you guys. Welcome to another Friday Q&As with Magdalena on Fridays. You know, today is going to be a little different because what I wanted to do is um, really support my friend, Dr. Isabella Wentz, who's right here with me. Yeah, I've got a friend. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we both live in Boulder. And, um, you know, and so that was just so easy to come up and create something in the kitchen together. So in case you're not familiar, I'm sure those of you who have a thyroid condition, you're pretty familiar with Dr. Isabella Wentz's work. Her book, um, Hashimoto's Thyroiditis, Root Cause, is, hit the New York Times bestseller, even though it was a self-published book, but that's how huge it became. Kind of shows you the problem that Hashimoto's is. And then just uh, a couple of days ago, the new book came out, The Hashimoto's Protocol. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to have her here with us because, you know, one thing that I, I feel is really um, important about the book is that there are so many protocols in here that are pretty timeless and are protocols that can be used pretty much by anyone. Gwen, you know, one thing is, sorry, we've got somebody, uh, we've got a wonderful lady helping us with the camera. Let's Go bring, ahead. let's bring, yeah, it's hard to hear on the phone on the computer. Let's bring the, the we are using the microphone from the phone, so let's bring the phone um, closer. Awesome. Um, and my crew is telling me all about it, that it's not easy to hear. So uh, let us know whether the sound is a little bit better now that the microphone is closer. And if not, then maybe let's just even put it here and that will be, um, even if it's in front of the camera, that's fine. We, we want people to hear what we got to say today. <laughs> We've got important things to say. We do. We, we do. do. So before mm -hmm. we get started with, uh, you know, and of course we want to show you a bunch of different recipes today. We're going to be talking to you about liver support for hormones because it is such an important um, body organ that is hugely connected to our hormonal balance. So we're going to be talking about juices, we're going to be making teas, we're going to be making um, mojitos, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just to show you some of the things that we can do um, so that you can start it literally tomorrow. But before we do that, I want to ask you first, what is your, what's your whole story with Hashimoto's? Like, how did you get started with this? And because we are, we are Hashimoto's, we are Hashi sisters. I've had it, I still do. Um, and you've got a history of Hashimoto's. So how, tell us about it. Well, I was um, not always interested in Hashimoto's until, of course, I got diagnosed myself. So that was never something that I wanted to specialize in when I was in pharmacy school or even when I graduated. Um, I had chronic fatigue, I had joint pains, I had irritable bowel syndrome, panic attacks, anxiety, depression, you name it. If, if there's a thyroid symptom, I pretty much had it. And for almost 10 years before I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's. At the time when I was diagnosed, I was already working as a pharmacist and I, um, of course, knew about thyroid hormones and thyroid medications. And I started on those and they were only like a tiny bit helpful. So I went from sleeping from 12 hours to like 11 hours a night, and I was like, okay, there's gotta be more I can do. And I also wanted to figure out if there was anything I can do to reverse the condition. Yeah. Because um, Hashimoto's is progressive, right? And yeah. so you start off with Hashimoto's, and then your thyroid gland is just destroyed more and more, and then you end up with another autoimmune condition. And that was scary to me. I was only in my 20s when I got diagnosed. So I wanted to figure out what I can do to get myself better, one, feeling better, yeah. and two, if there was anything I could do to stop the progression yeah. of the condition. Are we sounding good? No. No, okay. no good. So maybe we need to put the phone closer. Oh, let's bring the phone closer, yeah, to, um, I'm just going to unplug it for a second and um, literally put us, put the mic, we're using the microphone from the phone, so hopefully that is better. So are you guys not, uh -oh. you can't hear at all or, because we, I can see that we are getting sound. Um, Greg and Rachel just said can't hear. Anybody else, you guys, can you let us know if you can hear us? Let's see. I can hear you ladies fine. Thanks, Amy. Okay, cool. Awesome. All right. So I think sound check has worked. Yeah. Woohoo. Woo All Great right. Well, check. we've got a camera right in front of us, which is not the sexiest thing, but hey, it's all about making it work. You can see my messy so. kitchen now. <laughs> hey, I see this beautiful green kitchen, so stop. <laughs> She's got a very polished, uh, self-deprecating sense of humor. So we're both from Poland. I don't know if we mentioned that. Yeah. Well, we yeah. we have we actually both uh, also Chernobyl. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, children. Anyway, so we were talking about your story, 
Um, and um, yeah, so, so you wanted to really work on it and, and, and stop the progression of Hashimoto's, right? I wanted to stop the progression of Hashimoto's and most of all, I wanted to feel better. Yeah. Because I was sleeping for 10, 11, 12 hours in my 20s and I was like a couch potato. I had brain fog, fatigue, joint pains, and it was not a fun way to live life. And I just, you know, I wanted, I had so many goals and dreams. Yeah. And it was like my couch, my TV, and that was pretty much your best friends. My two best friends. Yeah, yeah. totally. Um, and you've come a really long way, and um, they can tell you, oh, we've got this. Um, they're streaming on two different cameras. Well, thank you, Darius. Uh, we have some really techy uh, ladies there on. Oh, now I know why. Okay, you guys. I you think... turned up the volume. Thank you. We've got some real techy ladies. Two cameras going. You know what? I was using the Meville sound. So I think ah, I was, that okay. Makes sense. I think that is much much better. And, all right, we we're getting the messages better. Mm -hmm, we can hear so did we say important stuff that people can hear? Um, did you guys much better? Yes. Okay, we're set. Uh, let's see. Do we want to do it kind of over? Your story. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. So how what got you started in Hashimoto's? I mean, you were straight out of pharmacy school, right? And, 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 and then it's like people, like I remember like you had this big dream to, to like in this next big medication that's going to heal whatever and being on the sofa all day. So pretty much, yeah, I was, I went to pharmacy school because I wanted to find a cure for a disease, for a condition. I wanted to be a healer and help people recover their health. Yeah. And by the time I graduated, it was like, I just kept getting sicker and sicker. I had bowel syndrome, panic attacks anxiety and fatigue that basically had me confined to my couch. Yeah. And so when I got diagnosed, I wanted to do what I, I wanted to know what I could do to feel better. The medications just really weren't cutting it for me. Yeah. And I also knew that my body was attacking itself and I wanted to stop that attack. I wanted to see what I could do to prevent the progression. I didn't want to have more symptoms and more autoimmunity in my yeah. body. Yeah. I think a really important because like, what somebody just um, messaged us saying, Hey, if I have Graves disease, is this booking, you know, gonna help in any way. And here's the thing about grace, right? Like just because you remove the thyroid, and by the way, this lady had her thyroid removed, and it doesn't really mm -hmm. matter whether it's grace, whether it's um, Hashimoto's, whether it's celiac disease, whether it's MS, whether even you have issues with psoriasis, or uh, it's it's really so timeless this book, right? Because it is really about addressing the autoimmune condition and the element, and that's what your book is about, right? Absolutely. So Hashimoto's protocol gives you the fundamental that you need to do to take back your health. Yeah. And so we focus on supporting your liver, your adrenals, and your gut. These are the body systems that fail in most cases of chronic illness. Yeah. And so um, Hashimoto's protocol goes through that. And then we start looking for what are um, the underlying triggers in addition to the three body systems. The book focuses on building resilience. We're supporting the liver, we're supporting the adrenals, we're supporting the gut, making you stronger not as likely to suffer from all of the different triggers and you're not as likely to react to the chemicals and toxins in our environments. Now this is applicable for psoriasis, for Graves disease, for Hashimoto's. Um, specifically we do have a section on thyroid hormones and the advanced protocols. So you know this if you have Hashimoto's, we have that section. If you've had a thyroidectomy, if you've had radioactive iodine, you're also going to benefit from that section. If you have Graves disease, everything in the book will apply to you. Instead of increasing your thyroid hormones, you're going to want to actually suppress them. The section is on low naltrexone, which is an alternative medication that can actually help you suppress your thyroid hormones when you have Graves disease, and it's very, very low in the side effect profile. Um, and there's also interventions you can do to help yourself suppress the thyroid as you on under underlying root cause in your body to stop attacking yeah. itself. So, you know, those of you who guys have been following me for a while, but I always talk about building the foundation for hormonal balance, right? And my foundation is that three level that I always use, which is gut health, liver, and sugar levels. And when I got this book, I was like, I was flipping through it and I was like, I got the, you know, got the earlier book, I didn't really know what I was writing in that book. <laughs> and I'm looking at it and this says fundamentals pro, which is the first one, liver, second one is the gut. So we have a very similar, um, we have a very similar approach, right? Great minds Which, think alike. <laughs> <laughs> because it really, well, I wanted to talk about the liver today, but because you know, 
the liver, as much as it's important um, in the health of the um, of, of the thyroid, it is also, I mean, for anyone who wants to feel good, has to have a healthy liver, right? That's like no brainer there. Absolutely. And for all other hormones, I'll talk about this in a second. Why did you pick the liver as the first organ to balance the thyroid? And I was just really want to echo it's for who suffering from estrogen dominance. Um, it's a, uh, so we're getting a message, please stop moving your hands. I would like to hear. So apparently when we move our hands, Apparently, when we move our hand, um, the ladies can hear and it's cutting. That is the most amazing thing I've ever heard. Hmm. Okay. Well, then we just have to stand still. <laughs> <laughs> we will do that. I got all of the movement out of the first time. I don't know how to go when we are making food. Um, all right. Well, anyway. All right. So, last, so let's talk about the liver and why it's so important in thyroid. And why do you use it as the first body system? So one of the reasons is because I had clients who just weren't getting better and we would put mm -hmm. them on support and they would have a hard time with some of the supplements and have adverse reactions or they would try some of the gut protocols and they'd have adverse reactions to them and they, you know, chronically ill they had multiple chemical sensitivities and they just like nothing was helping them they were just um, you know I'm usually because of all the information I put out on, online a lot of times the people that come to me, they've already read my book, they've already uh, read my first book, they've already read my blog, and they're already you know, gluten-free, they're already doing the right kind of nutrition. Yeah. And, so all the time, and so I wanted to figure out what to do that were really, really sick. And I started doing more research and I came across um, liver congestion or mm. basically what happens is liver gets overwhelmed with all these different toxins and circulating immune complexes that form when we have autoimmune disease and it has too much to us yeah. whenever we have autoimmune disease we have a leaky gut mm. and so that means we're not detoxing through our gut whenever we have thyroid disease, we're not sweating as much and so we're not detoxing through our skin and all of this pressure is on the liver to detox right yeah and so the liver gets sort of a backlog and I like to think of like a overwhelmed office work and she's got like a stack of papers on her desk and she just is trying so hard to get through everything but it's freaking her out whenever somebody puts new stuff on her desk it's like oh my gosh this is horrible I can't I can't deal with it and that's what when you're multiple when you have a congested liver, yeah. your body's like overwhelmed to everything so we have multiple chemical sensitivities that's a big sign if you're sensitive to perfumes if you're sensitive to stuff in your environment that other people aren't that's a good sign that your liver is congested if you fatigue, um, if you have um, headaches, if you have joint pains, these are all symptoms of liver congestion. And so I just started putting my clients on it. And within the first week, one of my ladies, she had been ill for over a decade and multiple doctors, functional medicine, tried all kinds of stuff. And yeah. um, she called me and she's like, hey, um, actually it was an email. She's like, hey, I'm at the mall for the first time in many years with children and wow. I'm doing some Christmas shopping. Um, it was around Christmas time, and she's like, I used to, I wasn't able to go to Yankee candy store without having like a severe attack. And so her chemical sensitivity went away. Wow. Joint pains, fatigue, headaches, all of that started lifting within just the first two weeks. And that's, thyroid antibodies. That's reduced amazing. Too. Give me a second. Um, one question is do we have a good uh, reception for the studio Wi Fi? Because we are still getting messages that it's, that we look adorable. But Yay, it's choppy. So is the studio a Wi-Fi like full strength? Is is anybody else using it perhaps? Mm -mm. No. Okay. Um, I don't see any other reason. Hey, you guys, what we're going to do is I think the recording should be good. And what we're going to do is we're going to post it afterwards. I'm this is happening. Technology um, um, it happens. Wi-Fi. You could try Michael's Wi-Fi. Um, but then we're going to lose the wife. The so mm -hmm. that's that's the, um, that's a there. So I think the recording typically happens quality than the life. So let's then just keep going and then do it, um, and then post basically the recording. That's what we I think we're gonna do. So uh, no no moving of hands. So I can't I cannot. No. I, my hand right. So that I do not move them. I'm holding mine right here. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. So. Um, so why, let's talk about what, 
Um, and by the way, uh, we've got a juice. Let's just talk about, a little bit about the, the stuff we're drinking right now. So drinking, you made this juice for us, right? And for today, this is like the, your green juice that is in the book, but we're going to post it on uh, my crew members. Are gonna, don't move my hands. Um, do you want to So what, um, what's in the juice? Cheers, yeah, and so one of the ways to support your liver is to do green juices, right? So these are one of the foods that can help you um, move some of those toxins along. So you've got all of this wonderful chlorophyll and that binds up toxins, and that's, that's what makes the juice nice, pretty, and green. Um, what we have, what I like to put in the juice is gonna be some cucumbers, um, some green apples. I love to put um, carrots in there as well, chopped kale, put in there and then a little bit of a peeled lime for flavor. Every now and then I'll sprinkle it with a little bit of sea salt that helps to give your adrenals um, nice and balanced. So um, this is you guys hear about tasty. this, sea salt, right? You know, and sea, well, the other thing about sea salt I love is that sea salt brings out the sweetness in the juice. And so you don't need so much sugar in the juice. You can just use the salt to bring out the sweetness, which is, and it's great for the adrenals. So Absolutely. don't be afraid of don't be afraid of the salt. Sea salt is great. Sea salt is amazing, and um, the cool thing about the juice is, and one thing to keep in mind is you don't want to put like seven apples in it, so you want to do like, oh, I'm moving my hands again. <laughs> Must be my, okay. <laughs> so you want to put some, um, just a little bit of a green apple, so maybe half of a green apple, and then the rest you want to do veggies. Carrot, some sweetness, the lime and sea salt will break it down. It's really, really a lovely juice, and you get plenty of servings of vegetables into your body. So this is really, really great for starting your detox. And it's one of the things we um, recommend in getting off of, one of the things I recommend in the liver support is getting, um, getting off of caffeine. Now caffeine, Magdalene and I have both had love, um, and hate. love and hate relationships <laughs> with caffeine. It, it helps us to get things done when we're in a launch, like a you know, book launch or um, when you have your programs coming out or trying to finish book deadlines, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, but then we're always like, how do we, we want to wean off of it? And the best ways to wean off of it is make sure that you're replacing yourself with plenty, plenty of liquids and actually supporting your liver because that helps you detoxify some caffeine metabolites. Totally. And so one of the things that I, um, I want to ask you about, which is really important, of somebody who's sluggish liver. So there's a lot of stuff for sure, like I'm tired all the time, I've got bad breath, I've got, you know, just like yellow thing on my eyes, right? My, my eye whites are yellowish and not white, that kind of stuff. But is there anything that's like super prominent, you know, uh-oh, that's, that's my liver? You know, absolutely. If somebody has chemical sensitivities, so if mm -hmm. they have perfumes they're reacting to, if they're reacting to um, benign things in their environment, this is going to be a very, very um, sign that their liver is congested and impaired, um, bags under the eyes. This mm. is also a common symptom of liver impairment. Um, yeah. <laughs> so this is um, skin breakouts. When you have skin breakouts and you have, um, basically what this means is that the toxins are trying to find their way out. They're not able to get out through your liver, and so they end up trying to leave through your skin when you have eczema, skin irritation. Yeah. Um, live, uh, you have skin irritation, uh, eczema, breakouts, acne, those kinds of things. Yeah. What are, um, or like the enzymes in uh, the liver, like you get your, you know, blood work done, right? And there's the ATL, um, ASL, I think, right? Markers. Would that concern you? That would definitely concern me. So, um, what I have in the Hashimoto's protocols, I have a questionnaire and assessment, mm, great and it's, one. A, it's got over a hundred questions that go through if your liver is congested, and then you give yourself a score. So the higher your score, the more likely um, your liver is impaired. The good news is, is when you have severe toxicity, you actually have um, a higher chance of really rapid improvement. So we have all of these questions, and you'll see within the two weeks once you do the liver support protocol, you'll see a huge improvement in how you feel. Yeah, the, and it's the, a long the more toxic list. you are. It's a long list too. So um, one of the things I really like about what you mentioned in the book is about like 
how to go quickly, uh, how, sorry, how to go slowly about detoxing and what can happen when you go like, oh, I'm gonna do this detox and I've got all my powders and protein uh, shakes and whatever, whatever, and I've got these supplements I just paid 500 bucks for. Um, what can happen? What happened to you? So there's wonderful information out there on the internet and then there's also information that's not so wonderful and some of the, there's forceful detox methods. So mm. there's things like DMSA, which is chelation therapy. Yeah. And that can basically pull out toxins from your from your body where they're stored and move them somewhere else in the body yeah. if your liver's not working properly. There's, if you go on a juice cleanse, mm -hmm. um, if you have adrenal issues, which most people with thyroid disease do and most chronically ill people do, yeah. uh, people with hormone imbalances do, you're gonna make yourself feel worse with just doing a, a juice cleanse if, yeah. you, if you don't prepare yourself properly. Um, and then we have people who, um, for me, I tried spirulina, mm -hmm. and that's supposed to be an excellent detoxifier except for my body wasn't ready for it, so I wasn't sweating, I wasn't you know, moving my bowels properly, so my, my gut was congested, my liver was congested, and I ended up with a new autoimmune condition. So no. It wasn't fun. It was called giant papillary conjunctivitis, so I wow. had these giant um, pimples on my eyelids. No. I had to stop wearing contact lenses. It was, it was not fun, let me tell you guys. Um, oh and this God. is what can happen, is the toxins recirculate and they get somewhere else in your body. So some of them maybe came out of my thyroid, which was good, but at the same time, they just went somewhere else rather than coming out of the body. Yeah. And the liver protocol that I recommend, we're focusing on supporting your liver. So going back to that office worker analogy, instead of like going into the office and like shaking up all of her papers and making a huge mess, which is what most detoxes do, yeah. we're basically giving her an assistant and saying, hey, let me help you process some of these papers yeah. and make you give you some tools and a better computer so you can work more efficiently. Yeah. And this is what all this stuff does. It's, it's, it's for exactly, so going really gently, I love that. So hey you guys, uh, we've got a couple of questions coming in, so let's take that in case you're logging in a little bit later. Um, I'm here with my really good friend, Dr. Isabella Wentz, and uh, we're talking about her latest book, Hashimoto's Protocol, not just for thyroid people, of course for thyroid folks, and much more. And that's why I want to cover the liver part. Um, one thing I want to ask you for, if there are people in your life who are showing thyroid symptoms, do tag them in this broadcast here today so they can tune in and listen as well. And really, seriously, anybody would benefit from some liver love, really. Oh, yes. So we have some questions here uh, coming in. Um, Oxalate, uh, so Sarah is asking about losing weight on thyroid mats because of her impaired, she wants to hear about losing weight on thyroid mats because of her impaired liver. Um, mm. So would liver play, a, liver, liver play a role in thyroid and mm -hmm. health? And, and what happens and why can't you lose weight? So one of the cool things, what the liver does is it helps to convert T4 which is levothyroxine and um, one of most commonly prescribed medication for thyroid. And this is one of the less active thyroid hormones. The liver does the majority of the work in converting T4 to T3. And T3 is our active hormone that helps us lose weight, that helps us grow beautiful hair, makes us feel you know, alive and fresh and vibrant. And what the liver does when it's congested is it doesn't do that conversion. Now, once we address the liver congestion, what I see in, um, 5% of my clients and people that have gone through the liver protocol is they feel significantly better within just one to two weeks and they have more energy and a lot of their symptoms, thyroid symptoms dissipate because they're utilizing either their internal thyroid hormones better or their, ex their external thyroid hormones. So they're converting better. And in some cases, people can, e can even actually stay on a medication like levothyroxine. They may not need to find a doctor that will prescribe natural desiccated thyroid or armor mm -hmm. when they support their liver and their gut properly and their adrenals, um, what they start utilizing their medications better. It's, it's, pretty, it's pretty amazing. Let me just start making sure that we have the sound. Okay, um, I think the sound should be back on um, working better now again. And if you see a little dog <laughs> in the background, that's Boomer. Say hello to Boomer. Yeah, Boomer is right here. He's behaving himself really well. So we lost the sound for a second and I think we've got it back on. Uh, that should be all good. So yeah, so basically what you were saying is the conversion of T4 to T3 happens in the liver for thyroid folks, right? And I just wanna add on to this, mm -hmm. that when it comes to things like estrogen detoxification, the liver is hugely important. When I was struggling with estrogen dominance, that means terrible PMSs, I had 
um, like swollen hands, I had water retention in all my, my around my limbs, uh, you know, just moody as hell before my period, hair going out, um, oh, it's just showing the book, great, okay, so let's fix that, um, oh, oh, and just our chat, and just your chest, oh, uh -oh. okay, all right, so this should be, that should fix it, okay, that we, sh we should be back in again, good, um, yeah, so, you know, so estrogen gets metabolized in the liver as well. That's the bottom line. And let's get, shall we get into more cooking? And it was like food preparations here. And I was just saying earlier, if you have somebody who has thyroid issues, who has, is struggling with hormonal issues, who you think has, would need a little bit of liver love, tag them in this post here. And, um, well, the book, right? The book is all, I mean, we are touching on stuff here, you guys. One of the things, can I just tell you before we cook? Can I just tell you one of the things I love about the book is that it's written as protocols. So it is literally like for the gut, what do you do? Like you don't need to read text and pages and pages of stuff and like highlight and then, you know, make sure that you understand it properly. It's all given to you. And I love that about your book. It's like literally stuff that you can print out and put it on, you know, um, and use it for the gut, for the liver, for adrenals, for um infections like SIBO like parasites like candida yeast overgrowth or yeast overgrowth you have right uh for H pylori which I've been just diagnosed with and I'm gonna talk about it next week um what else do you have there I mean you got the whole gut protocol right is there mm -hmm. and so the things that you're gonna do nutritionally um supplements and it's just like no nonsense book there's no fluff in that book it's just mm. substance and I love that book for that I have to tell you thank you so much it was Actually, I wrote it because of one of my readers. Mm. So she was like, you know, I love digging for my own health, but can you just give me done for me protocols? So that's why I came up with this book, and it's based on my experience with over 2,000, working with over 2,000 people in the last few years and helping them um, go back to their health. So the fundamental protocols are things you do regardless of what caused your condition. So whether, you know, for us, Chernobyl is definitely a trigger. For other people, it's Epstein Barr virus. So many different triggers, you know, stress, toxins. Or in stress toxins, stress, um, we have impaired gut function, infection, all of these different things can cause you to have thyroid disease. The fundamental protocols go through all of the different things you need to do to get yourself feeling well. And this has been tested with over um, 2,000 people now. And um, we see improvement in 80% of people with the fundamental protocols when they feel significantly better. Some of them can actually go into remission as well. The advanced protocols go through like what are your individual root causes. So I have assessments to help you figure that out. Mm -hmm. And we go through, okay, so if you have these symptoms, for example, if you have low B12 levels, if you have bloating, um, this is a potential reason that you might have SIBO. Mm -hmm. And so um, I tell you how to test for SIBO, what treatments for SIBO and I include of course medications which are always an option and more gentle options like herbs that have worked for my clients mm -hmm. as well as what you can how you can utilize food as medicine whenever you have any of these conditions so can I tell you we have a lot of people asking to my big surprise asking about oxalates I mean Kim is asking I mean there is Alex asking there was Janine asking um, a lot of people asking about oxalates so in relation to the juice that we are talking about. Do you want to just mm -hmm. address that? Somebody's got an oxalate problem, right? These juices might be hard to navigate on low oxalate <laughs> uh, juices only. What do you think? What can they do? Yeah, absolutely. And so the protocol is going to be helpful for about 80% of people coming in and that are having a hard time. The advanced protocols, we go through how to modify everything. Mm. So if you have an oxalate issue, we talk about what foods to remove, right? And then we're also talking about how to modify your diet um, accordingly, what supplements to add to help you get rid of the oxalates. So, you know, ox bile can be very, very helpful. And when we go through the liver support protocol, um, we utilize not just food as medicine, which is of course wonderful, but we also utilize various supplements to help your body get rid of toxins. And oxalates, you know, are a toxin if you're not getting rid of them. So we're doing things like ox bile and gallbladder support as well as other herbs to help the body. And we're also removing foods and things from our environment. I'm trying not to. My, I know. It's like my a, inner Italian I think, coming out. I, thought, I think like both of us have some uh, maybe <laughs> Italian, Polish and Italian. Anyway, stay yes. still, don't move. It's so hard. So I will um, try mm -hmm. to report. So um, yeah, so yeah. oxalates, 
can be a problem and we do have modifications in the book if you have a low oxalate diet yeah um, and you will see that um, when you utilize the recommendations such as probiotics and um, the various different enzymes that help us break down oxalates, yeah. you will likely be less sensitive to them. Yeah, and, and in the meantime, you know, you guys, you don't have to just do juicing. I mean, there are so many other things, and we're going to show that in a second, that you can do to support your liver, that juices is just one of the many things that we can do for support. So don't stress about it. If you have oxalate issues, you don't do juicing um, necessarily. I mean, there's some vegetables you can do, but, um, but focus on the other protocols. So where can we get the book? Uh, the book is available everywhere that books are sold. Um, you can get it on Amazon right now, so yes. that's wh who's shipping the fastest. Yes. And it's on sale for like 40% off. Can we tell them about your uh, Amazon ranking? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Um, so the book is ranked out of all books on Amazon as number two, which is amazing. And it's just showing how many people need this information that we're standing up and we're sort of our own army taking back our health. Um, there's one book ahead of ahead of Hashimoto's protocol. It is called Old School, which um, which is kind of ironic because most people with thyroid disease, with, with hormonal imbalances are treated with like an old school way and they're not getting the proper care. So irony at its finest, right? Yeah, right. And so it's Bill O'Reilly's book, you know, the Fox News uh, anchor's book. So we were hoping to get Isabella on the first book, on the first list on, on Amazon. Because really, I, I just feel like it's something that everybody should know about. And um, whether it's a gift or whether it's just for yourself, even if you don't have a thyroid. If you have a thyroid, it's a given. You're going to get the book. But if you don't have a thyroid, if you have an estrogen dominance, I mean, seriously, ladies, anybody who's got even menopause going on, if you've got problems with PCOS, your testosterone is high, your sugar level, you've got insulin resistance, and you talk about insulin resistance here as well, right? All of those protocols are just nicely laid out there for you. So get the book. I recommend um, Amazon for sure. Okay, so should we get cooking to the next the next thing? Let's do this. So why don't we go with um, a little bit of a fun afternoon drink? So sure. One of the things we recommend is getting. Mm -hmm. One of the things I recommend is getting off of caffeine, of course, and detoxing from that. One of the things you can do to do that is. Make sure you have hot lemon water in the morning. Mm -hmm. So you basically take the juice of half an organic lemon and add some hot water into the glass. You sque just squeeze that in and then you sip it throughout the day. So this is gonna help to wake up your liver. This is gonna help you detoxify some of the caffeine. And uh, you know, I'll, a lot of times when I go through this, I'm like, why did I ever drink caffeine? <laughs> and that's what a lot of my clients say. They have more energy when they do hot lemon water in the morning yeah. than they do with caffeine. A nice side benefit is it actually helps to um, people, it helps with um, absorption of thyroid hormones as well because it gives us a little bit of that stomach acid boost which is needed to help with um, absorbing thyroid hormones. Yeah, and so, you know, somebody's asking, I've got endometriosis, can this help? The answer is absolutely yes because of the liver support. Um, absolutely yes. And then uh, Beverly's asking about H. pylori. I'm going to talk about H. pylori next week about what happened to me because diagnosing it is can be really tricky. Uh, but if you want like an immediate protocol, it's again, it's in here. I'm actually using your protocol uh, for H. pylori, which includes things like mustard gum. And it's, hey, you guys, and it's not antibiotics. It's not heavy meds. It's all really nice herbal solutions that you can give a try first before you go the big guns route, right? Yeah, the big guns. And just being as using my pharmacist card, we see a lot of adverse reactions when we have the triple or quadruple antibiotic therapy mm. for each pylori, but there's wonderful natural treatments that you can use. Yeah, awesome. Um, what if I can't drink lemon water? Um, Wanda is asking. Um, Isabella is gonna be back in a second. You know, uh, Wanda, I would say, well, it depends on why can't you drink it. Is it because you have histamine issues? Um, you don't like lemon? Try apple cider vinegar. And if you can't do that, then the other really nice old, old school detoxification protocol for for that will be to use sea salt, you know? Um, so like a half a teaspoon of sea salt and a glass of water first thing in the morning uh, is really great because uh, it really helps to, not just your adrenals, but it also helps with the detox detoxification here uh, of your liver. So yeah, so let me just look at some other questions that are just coming in. A lot of questions about oxalates, you guys. I think I'm gonna do a call on that. 
Uh, I'm actually myself having oxalate uh, sensitivity and I'm getting on top of it. So I will do that in one of the upcoming calls. Stay tuned. If you like Hormones Balance on Facebook and I'll sign up to my website, it's the easiest thing. Every Friday morning we send an email saying, Whoa, we're starting now. And so you know when what's the topic that I'm going to be talking about on any given day. Be, be good? I'm good, yeah. Good. I got something in my throat, so I don't want to be coughing over the um, broadcast. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, can you suggest a good replacement for coffee? Mm -hmm. I just love the taste, she says. I drink lemon water every morning, so it's a taste choice. What do you recommend? I really love Dandy Blend. Mm -hmm. Have you tried that? Yes. That's yeah. really, really tasty, and then it helps to detoxify your liver as well. So it's got dandelion root, which is excellent. Mm -hmm. And you can get that on Amazon whenever. Yeah, many health stores carry that too. Yeah, it's really tasty. It tastes just like coffee, and some people say. Right? Yeah, no, it's, I, I totally agree. I have to tell you, though, it's one thing, though, they use barley in it, and barley leaves, and so even though it's gluten-free, I have met people who are very sensitive to gluten. I have had people who had a reaction to Dendi Blend. So, you know, um, the other way you can do is, um, and I think you have some stuff on that as well, dandelion, using dandelion. So if you use dandelion root and chicory, and then just pour the hot water over it, strain it like a regular coffee, it actually, I tell you, man, it just tastes exactly like coffee. It's quite amazing. And so you get the flavor going. Of course, it doesn't give you that caffeine kick. So what are we making next? So why don't we make um, a virgin mojito? All right, virgin mojito it is. All right, so. So funny, she's cooking today. Nobody needs me cooking today. She's making I know, food. well, we're just making drinks, right? So <laughs> but normally I have Magdalena over and then she cooks or, you know, vice versa. Or I'll go over to her place and she'll make me some delicious food. So the virgin mojito, um, one of the things we rec I recommend is getting off of alcohol. And sometimes it's nice just to have something fizzy and bubbly, right? And mm -hmm. so um, the mojito is one of my favorite drinks. It's great for springtime. The way that you make mojitos is you want to get some fantastic mint. Um, it just, it smells so oh. caring and oh. you, just, you just feel refreshed smelling it. Mm -hmm. So you put that into a mortar and pestle. Um, normally we use simple syrup and sugar. We're not gonna do that this time around. So I'm just gonna have a little bit of hot water. Let me uh, step out here. To help to blend up and mash up the, the mint. Yeah, just and we can see you on camera just to let you know. Great. That's always a good thing, right? Um, technology is always fun. And so you just wanna mash up the mint a little bit. And that starts releasing some of the smells and some of the oh activity. Oh my gosh, the whole kitchen, you guys. I'm waiting for a camera that can start transmitting smells, smells as well. Good. Smell of vision. The internet. Mm -hmm. That would be fabulous, right? Scratch and sniff TVs. Um, so you just mash this up a little bit. You get this going. Next thing you do is you want to take some uh, lime and you squeeze this in to get that nice Wait. lime flavor. This is also great for detoxifying. We, ha we have some fancy tools here, but... So this was, believe it or not, you guys, this was my present for Isabella for Christmas. This is a lemon and lime squeezer. This is beautiful, thank you so oh, much. Oh, you already squeezed it, so we all did. Yeah, but yeah. And just in case but you don't have it, highly recommend it. This is really, really great, and you can get fancy. You don't have to be fancy. I, um, you know, you can just squeeze it with your hands. If you want to get extra juice, this this is works wonders. Yeah, and get the seeds out as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a little bit of lime juice with. You want to lift it up the a little mint. bit for the camera? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. It's I love having a oh. cooking pro telling me how to make sure everything looks great on camera, right? Um, thank you for that. So this is going to be mashed up. You'll see this. You'll be able to smell this right away. Yeah. Oh. You can add a little bit of ginger for flavor. Um, you can do cut up ginger if you'd like. You can also do ginger from a powdered form, makes it a little bit easier. So I'm um, just gonna take a little bit of a spoon here and add a tiny little bit, maybe half a teaspoon, or I'm sorry, a quarter of a teaspoon of that. Sprinkle mm -hmm. some of that. Not bad for a pharmacist, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's feeding us ginger here. <laughs> right? Food is medicine. And the mortar pastel mm -hmm. is traditionally used in, by pharmacists to make medications. You can also make herbs and spices with it, too. Oh, I love it. So I actually didn't know how to cook when I was in pharmacy school, and I used all of my pharmacist skills to, um, chemistry lab skills, to actually start cooking and baking. Um, the last exciting ingredient is going to be coconut water. 
water. This is very hydrating. Mm -hmm. It can be very, very helpful. And so you can pour this in here and just mix it up if you want to be fancy. Other than that, you know, you can just pour it into a cup and um, add that. Do you have um, a cocktail thing going on here? Uh, let's see. Well, let's you know, let's let's take that short glass. Uh, this one? Yeah, that'll wow, be perfect. Nice. Very nice, very nice. Thank you, thank you. Ah, there we go. So you That's can pour that in. You know, so you can, can add you, a little can bit you, more. Like, you know, because sometimes like we go out, and I find this is the hard part. Like sometimes you go out with girlfriends to, you know, like you don't want to really drink, but it's like you kind of want to drink, and and it's, you don't want to be like that virgin sitting there, right? So you want to have a drink. And I find that the hardest part is when you go out for cocktails, they are so sweet. Like mm -hmm. it's just like ooh, nauseating for me. Because like once you get off sugar, let me tell you, like your taste buds start recalibrating and I agree. right? Totally like everything is so that's so sweet. So what can you do? Do you have any tricks for people who are like want to just reduce the sugar, which by the way helps a lot with the liver, to kind of reduce the sugar when we go out? Something like this. This, you know? this is fantastic to do. So just doing um, a little bit of a virgin mojito. If you go to like a fancy bar, you can ask for this and ask them to make it without simple syrup. They can actually do that for you. They can just mash up some mint mm -hmm. um, and do maybe some seltzer water for you. Um, I, you know, if you're transitioning off of sugar, you can actually do something like stevia. It works really well for some people, people that have high blood sugar, high blood pressure. It can actually reduce that. If you have low blood sugar and low blood pressure that can actually exacerbate it so i don't recommend it for everybody but for people who are you know in balance or just trying to transition you can do something like stevia i like organic stevia whenever possible and you can add a little bit of that to taste if you're still trying to transition off of sugar which if you're on sugar i recommend definitely stepping away from that and this is something that that is nice to have at the end of the day um totally. just kind of gives you that nice little flavor if you feel like you you'd like to if you're drinking wine or margaritas every night or mojitos every night this is something that's great for transitioning very nice i like it can i taste it yeah i'm gonna taste it how you like it mm. <clears throat> yeah i love it <clears throat> need some ice i guess right just to uh, <clears throat> prop it up a little i love it like for my flavor i like i totally love it <clears throat> yeah and you know the cool thing is we're using coconut water right so you, like you said it's super hydrating um, and it's sweet already as it is, mm -hmm. so love it. Yeah, if you wanted to make it sweeter, I probably would add a little bit of maple syrup or, or, or um, stevia. Mm -hmm. So it depends on how you like things. Um, I like to add a little bit more sweeteners if I'm having a party or if I'm hosting yeah. um, to make it palatable for different people. But there's other people that like different um, flavors when it's, it's a yeah. little bit more... Um, um, when it's a little bit more... It has a nice sour taste, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And, you know, like, no harm putting in some, um, um, a, a touch of salt as well, right? Like, oh, yeah. another thing is also amplifies the sweetness. Love it. Yeah. Totally great idea. Um, hey, it's Friday. Like, we should, like, I brought a tequila. Can we add some tequila? <laughs> you can add some rum or tequila if you would like to have a healthy alcoholic beverage. A somewhat healthy alcoholic beverage, right? Because um, we do know that alcohol turns into sugar. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't recommend staying off of alcohol or caffeine for the rest of your life. With the liver support protocol, we go through this for two weeks where you help rebalance your body. Yeah. Because if you're struggling with chronic illness, you don't want to feel horrible um, forever. And you also don't want to be restricted forever because that can be stressful. Yeah. Um, so let's, do we want to talk about making, do we want to maybe start making some tea? Some yeah, let's, tea? Let's, let's make, just transition to the afternoon. I love that. And hey, you guys, for those of you who are coming in new, this is the book we're talking about today with all the recipes in there is Hashimoto's Protocol. Um, get it on Amazon. We are helping Isabella to get to the first book, number one book on Amazon, because we want to get the message out. I think there's a lot of women who need this, who need this. Um, if you have girlfriends who are struggling with hormonal issues, um, including a thyroid, including estrogen dominance, including can't get pregnant, terrible PMSs, you are the girl who's suffering from that because the girlfriend is, then you definitely <laughs> want to be doing, you want to get some, you want to give her some love and support. That book is great for that. Um, a drinks in the book. Yes, they are. Chris is asking, oh, Kyla is asking. Yes, the drinks are in the book. It's actually, we've got, and you've got plenty of other recipes in the book as well. So yeah, we've got, we've got awesome. some detox drinks to help you get going, to help you wean off of caffeine, because that's hard. We both know. 
And then we also have some wonderful ways to use food as medicine in the book. So we've got some recipes and also some great replacements. Like what do you do if you've been eating this way? How do you transition to more of a nutrient dense diet? Mm -hmm. um, All right, so are we making tea? Yeah, so I always, you know, tea is probably my biggest, like, um, what's it, a chili's heel. It's something that's really, really great. I love it. And then I'll have too much and I think I have superpowers. And then I, I you know, I don't get to bed on time. And You mean like black tea? Black tea. Black tea. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so the way to get around that is to start drinking some herbal teas. And if you can create your own herbal blend, this is going to be really fantastic. Um, I have uh, turmeric tea, so we know turmeric is excellent for thyroid. It helps us with detoxification. It can be helpful with thyroid nodules, even thyroid cancer. Um, and the way that I do this, like I'm going to make this right here from scratch, but the way I normally do this is I pre-mix all of this, and I just have a little um, canister with a mix of these different herbs and spices to um, to create a little let's, bit of tea. Let's move the thing. Yeah, so let's make it pretty. Can see. Um, there we go. So yep. we've got. Yep, we've got. We've got everything. Just move that away for a second. Like there's some big thing in the way. Oh, that's that's the camera. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. Well, we can see what you're doing. So this is ground cinnamon. Cinnamon is really helpful for balancing our blood sugar, and we're gonna add a little bit of cinnamon. Um, you can do different, you know, basically it's one to one to one, except for the pepper, you do not want to do <laughs> a one to one ratio. The pepper you're gonna sprinkle on top. And I'll tell you guys why, we, why we're using that in a minute. But I'm saying she loves rubus tea. Yay, way to yeah, go, rubus that's is wonderful. Great. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of cinnamon, or a tiny bit of cinnamon in here. I'm gonna help you open up the Thank bottles. you. And by the way, cinnamon is also wonderful for liver, uh, for sugar levels. Oh yeah, right? oh yeah. It's, it's been excellent. actually medicinally proven to balance sugar levels, so another great thing. Ginger, ginger is excellent for supporting gut function. Um, so back when I was struggling with Hashimoto's and acid reflux, ginger tea was actually something that was really, really helpful for me. Um, it mm. can be a bit spicy, um, so if you are somebody that likes low spice, you may want to do less of it. If you like more spice, you're going to want to do more of it. Um, so you could take a little bit of that. So Doreen is asking, what do you suggest for non-alcoholic fatty liver? Doreen, so everything we've been talking about since um, the beginning of this call, however choppy it was, is all from the book. So it, all of that is going to help non-alcoholic fatty liver, correct? Yeah, absolutely. And so that's going to be, um, a lot of times we're going to want to make sure you follow the liver support protocol. So we have seen um, liver enzymes going down when we've had problems with al non-alcoholic liver disease. Um, and then I'll, I'll take the lemons here too. Um, and uh, the liver is the first step that you want to support. And then you also want to support the adrenals with um, non-alcoholic liver disease because there's also a sugar component in there. Mm -hmm. We're going to add some turmeric in there. Um, turmeric um, has so many benefits and it's um, this beautiful yellow spice. So you're, you can add it to your tea, you can add it to um, actually coconut milk, you can make some delicious things with that. You mm -hmm. can add it to, I oftentimes cook with it, so I'll do um, a slow cooker chicken where, um, you know, busy woman's cooking, where I add a little bit of turmeric to that. Um, and then um, on top of that, you do want to get a little bit of black pepper, if, as long as you're not sensitive to it. The cool thing about black pepper is it actually helps to stretch out the effect of turmeric in the body. Mm. Turmeric is really fabulous um, for, has all these wonderful benefits and anti-inflammatory, detoxifying, but it gets cleared out of the body at a rapid rate. Um, this extends the half-life of turmeric in the body so that we sticks around longer. You just want to do a tiny bit of that. Then we squeeze a little bit of lemon. So um, this doesn't take this long. Normally I just have this pre-mixed and then um, I just squeeze a little bit of lemon into it. <laughs> do you want the squeezer? Tempted to do the lemon squeezer. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, try, squeezer. let's try that baby let's out. Demo, let's, let's demo see the it. squeezer. All right, so I put it upside or downside? Down. Downside. Oh, you haven't used it much yet. There we go. And then you squeeze. Let's see here. All right. Do you have to have like really good muscle for this? Well, you tell me. What do you think? I think I'm getting it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, this is beautiful. So you can see that getting nice and squeezed in. Um, if you want to be fancy, this is so awesome. Yep. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then after that, just gonna pour some hot water and we watch the beautiful colors change. So while you're doing this, we're getting asked a question from Dana who's saying, wonderful, in the book do you recommend, do you make recommendations for low liver function? Thank you. Where the liver enzymes are really, really low. When, I think she means when the liver enzymes are really, really low. Yeah, so um, when you're supporting the liver with the liver support protocol, we're gonna be helping the liver function. And it's, it's something that's going to be helpful whether you have an overactive en liver enzymes or underactive liver enzymes. So it, it's gentle and it brings you back into balance. So you see this beautiful turmeric tea. <clears throat> Yay! Look Yay. at the color! So beautiful! I'm going to move pretty. these things out of the way to show off some really pretty teacups. Oh, this is like a total... like my. My grandmother's, I think it was like a, it's like a Polish thing. My grandmother. Um, <laughs> That's what my husband too. says about all of my decorating things. Let's look at that. <laughs> so oh. these are pretty. Um, and, you know, part of tea, I think, is, is having that little ceremony of having you time. And whenever you're detoxing, it's important to take that and giving yourself that opportunity to heal and giving yourself the space to heal. So um, I just want to pour a little bit of that here yeah oh my gosh the color is just so beautiful it's like an orange juice <laughs> it Why is there's this? a question came in i'm just really good i had recently had a reactivation of ebv uh would you recommend the liver detox while trying to get the ebv under control or waiting great info ladies yeah so with epstein bar virus that's a really great question can yeah. trigger thyroid disease all kinds of autoimmunity mm -hmm. i have an advanced protocol in um hashimoto's protocol that focuses on how to treat reactivated Epstein-Barr virus. Part of that, a really important part of that, is gonna be supporting your liver and supporting your adrenals as well as your gut. So I recommend for everybody that's struggling with it to go through the fundamental protocol. And basically that builds up your resilience so the virus is um, helps you suppress the virus and prevents it from reactivating in your body again. A big part of that is making sure your vitamin D levels are in balance, your adrenals are in balance, of course, the liver and the gut. So um, you could work both of them simultaneously. Um, definitely anything that you do to build up your resilience is going to help you significantly in overcoming, um, in overcoming the Epstein-Barr virus. And you're going to feel a lot better when you do. Yeah, awesome. So can we do some tasting? Because sure it smells really good. So let's do a little... Mm. Intense. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, that's medicine, oh man. That's like, you know, your liver is getting some loving here from this. Mm -hmm. We can do like a little tiny bit of uh, stevia in it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Sure. So in the book, all of my recipes, they include stevia or maple syrup as an optional to, if, in case you want to sweeten them up. Mm. So if you have one of the um, palates that likes really bitter things, you would avoid that um, because they have a medicinal taste. If you are more like me, where you want to balance things out, I oftentimes will utilize stevia or maple syrup to give yourself that nice, um, that nice balance of you know bitter and sweet. And then this is something I could sip on a daily basis. And um, oh, the sweetness, yeah, it really helps. I just did a, literally just a little tiny sprinkle, mm -hmm. and it just really opens up the flavors uh, so much, and it binds. And that's what's one of the nice things about. Sugar is like, it does bind everything together. It doesn't have to be a lot um, to taste really good. So this is, this is yummy, yum, yum. So hey, you guys, so who's gonna be making what this weekend? And that's why I like to do these calls on Friday, is so you can run to the store, write down the notes. My team is gonna post some of the things online um, uh, in the message board. Uh, on on this video and then it's for you to just like hit the store print it out uh, Go shopping. So I'm wondering who is gonna be making what in terms of the recipes. So we showed the mojito mm -hmm. we showed the um, The tea right the turmeric tea and then we have the juice going So three recipes today and I'm wondering who is gonna be making what? Uh, I'm trying them all uh, Okay, that's awesome <laughs> Great. Um, we've got a, a question from Celeste uh, about what about PCOS? Uh, 
Mm. This is a good tea for someone with PCOS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. going to be really, really helpful. Um, another thing that I cover in the book is we, we go through some of the most helpful foods to support your liver. Um, you guys see berries here, which we didn't talk about. Um, berries are fantastic. They're, you can see the, the colors on them. They're full of antioxidants. Another cool thing is blueberries specifically. They're rich in myo-inositol, which is a type of sugar, a good type of sugar, right? And what it does is it actually helps to balance out TSH. Clinical studies show that it reduces TSH, so it helps to support thyroid function, reduces thyroid antibodies. It's effective for PCOS, diabetes, and believe it or not, obsessive compulsive disorder. So wow. um, blueberries are a rich source of myo-inositol, and I also have information, more information about using it um, from food and even in supplementation, and that is gonna be really, really helpful for PCOS. Um, and the key is you you know you want to make sure you're supporting those three body systems liver adrenals and gut whenever you have that, you're struggling with that and it's oftentimes an overlap with women with Hashimoto's and PCOS about yeah. um, something about between 30 to 50 percent of women with PCOS will actually have Hashimoto's right, as well right. they just might not know right. it right and and so that that's so true right and the reason why I started doing I don't know how many of you guys have been following me for that long but my first business was called Thyroid Diet Coach and then. I realized very quickly that when you have a thyroid condition, a lot of time women have also other hormonal stuff going on, and a lot of times it's coupled up with is either menopause, it's uh, the or PCOS or estrogen dominance is like almost every woman's got it. And I realized I've got to be able to deliver a wider. Um, I wanted to deliver wider uh, protocol than just uh, for the thyroid. Uh, we've got some great questions. What about dried blueberries? Will that be the same effect? You know, I actually prefer either you get them fresh or frozen. Mm -hmm. With dried fruit, it can actually aggravate yeast issues as well as mold issues. So generally, most women with thyroid disease are gonna have some sort of a yeast overgrowth. Um, and I talk about protocols to rebalance that, of course. Um, but it, but so you wanna kind of lay off of the, um, lay off of the dried fruit because they're yeah. very high in sugar and a lot of times they add sugar as well mm -hmm. to dried fruit and they don't even tell you that right so i'm gonna that's a i totally agree with you i echo that get the blue and you know what if you can't get fresh ones just get the frozen one every exactly. store has it right oh yeah um another question we've got coming in here uh, she's asking the community, but I think we can answer that question for her. <laughs> she's asking, Andrea is asking, what can anyone tell me, what uh, what are they saying? It's us. Um, the autoimmune disease and viruses, we should start with the liver? Question mark. What I found in all of my clients is that liver support is the best way to start, to start eliminating some of those symptoms and try to get rid of that toxic backlog. When you've got viruses in your body, they're producing toxic byproducts. Mm -hmm. When you've got toxins in your body, your liver's not properly circulating um, your hormones. Yeah. And then you've got these metabolites from estrogen that yeah. are toxic, that are not getting out. And so when you support the liver, you start moving out some of that um, backlog. And this gives your body more resilience and more strength to fight chronic viruses, to fight whatever infections you have in your body yeah. and get rid of symptoms which is which is amazing because who wants to struggle for with symptoms as they try to you know kill off the different infections and viruses totally and um you know just uh, like listening to you talk about it, it almost feels like you've gonna unplug the um the pipes unclog the pipes yes that's right? a great way of putting unplug it. the pipes first before you go and do like this big flush <laughs> in your body right and so that's really because that's what, it, what the liver is like your sieve right think about it so you want to if the sieve has been accumulating all this junk and it's not it's not your fault we all have it i mean you're in your 30s and 40s it's 30 40 years of just gunk building up and as much as the liver tries its best to eliminate things it really always focuses on like the super important things, right? Like the heavy metals, the bacteria, the yeast, the viruses, because that's what can kill us. But then all these other more benign stuff like thyroid hormone or estrogen or you know yeast, it kind of sits there. And so what you're talking about is really to clean up that, unclog that sieve, uh, clean up the sieve, unclog the pipes, and then get going. Um, what is PCOS? It stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Women who have high testosterone levels, a lot of times sugar issues, insulin resistance, and the final diagnosis is when you've got these pearl, like they kind of look pretty, but are not fun to have, mm -hmm. um, cysts in your ovaries. And they look like a pearl, literally three to five of them. So let's see. Um, oh, great questions, you guys. I'm yeah. excited to be chatting with you. 
So, is there any protocol for the book to help progesterone dominance? Ooh. Progesterone dominance. Um, so, yeah, actually, when you go through the liver support protocol, it will help you get naturally into balance. Um, because cause what's happening when you have hormones out of balance is generally your adrenals are out of whack and your liver is out of whack and they're not proper, properly creating and detoxifying. Um, and so this is something, when you do these fundamentals, um, I recommend starting that um, with my clients that whenever they have hormonal issues, we actually talk about doing liver support and adrenal support first as a fundamental before we do any kind of hormone therapy because we've seen that women's periods come back when they balance their adrenals. We've seen that their um, periods normalize. They have um, better chances of fertility once you get that in balance. And sometimes you actually have to lower and adjust your dosage of progesterone and, and estrogen. Absolutely, absolutely. So progesterone dominance never happens naturally in us, right? It's only when you're supplementing. So. Um, again, the liver, and, and actually one of the few things that I have seen when somebody doesn't respond very well to progesterone, um, topical progesterone, is because they either have yeast infections or they have problems with the liver. So hey you guys, can you just see like, whatever we talk about, it all kind of comes down back to the liver. The gut is also important. I don't want to minimize it anyway, trivialize it, but the gut, since we're talking about the liver today, it is, I think, very overlooked. Don't you think like, I think there's a lot of gut talk in the market already, like this even mainstream doctors are kind of like beginning to get it, but I feel like the liver is highly underestimated. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, if you're taking gut supplements, um, you can not have ad adverse reactions and they don't turn into the right things in your body if your liver is congested. Yeah. And so it's like you're feeding yourself more and more. Um, and you know, I really look at the liver as a sidekick to the gut. And when you support the liver, you start seeing all these other systems working better. So we see fewer allergies, we see fewer food sensitivities when we start supporting the liver because then you kind of take off that pressure off the gut to perform and detox, right? Because mm -hmm. your liver kind of um, takes over and says, okay, I'm here, I'm, I'm doing my job, gut, you don't have to do my job anymore, right? <laughs> yeah, good point. Hey, um, so can I ask my team to make sure that the Amazon link is posted on top and pinned to the top so you guys can just click on it, it takes you to Amazon to check out the book. Um, let's take two, two other questions. We've been really going for an hour, but we've got still a pretty Ooh. good audience. So so I'm thinking like, let's just keep going and taking the questions until until we can't stand here anymore or you guys are just so tired of listening to us. So a good question came in and that is, um, Michelle is saying, will this protocol work for somebody who's been diagnosed over 30 years ago? I had the zero thyroid hormone at a time. Wow, Michelle, this will definitely work for you. So I've had clients who were sick for five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years and um, they started these protocols. I know I've got some ladies in the 70s um, 80s that are taking back their health. It's really, really exciting to see because even people that have done a lot of functional medicine work, the two-week protocol can, can be dramatically um, changing for them. So I definitely think this is something that's going to help you and I'm looking forward to hearing your story and your feedback once you get yourself into balance. Yeah, okay. I mean, part of the reason why you became so big is because these protocols are really working and people come back and they post on your page, Thyroid uh, Pharmacist is Isabella's um, hey, is a blog, <clears throat> is, you know, it's those true stories about people who had these turnarounds. And can I just say, if somebody has thyroid for 30 years, if it's Hashimoto, so she's probably on medications, well, most likely. I mean, we are not saying she's gonna get off the meds, right? But it's just that the changes in the liver and the gut is gonna help her metabolize the medication better. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Maybe even less than it? Yeah, what we've seen is when we follow the liver support protocol, you're activating the medication better so you convert T4 to T3 better and you feel better, you feel more alive. Um, the fundamental protocol is focused on that. We've had some people that have been able to reduce their dosage of medication. Um, with the advanced protocol, we actually do get into how to potentially um, eliminate the triggers. So I've had some clients with H. pylori, root canals, mold, um, and we go through how to address all of these in the book <clears throat> that have been able to significantly reduce their dosage or get off of medications, even after you know quite a few years. I think 17 years was the record. Oh wow. And then I also have some advanced protocols to help you speed up tissue regeneration. That sort of happens on its own time, right? Yeah. Thyroid tissue can regenerate. It's much easier to um, actually, you know, prevent damage to the thyroid gland, but there are some things you can do to regenerate thyroid tissue. So I have some, um, there are low level laser, laser protocols that are covered in there. Yeah. And can I just, 
I, I, I mentioned, I was so excited. I actually texted Isabella to tell her this three days ago. I went for a scan of my thyroid. I haven't had it done in years. And I did have thyroid nodules in the past. And so, you know, do I eat the way she talks about it here? Yes, I do. And we, we both share a lot um, in terms of dietary um, choices and lifestyle choices, etc. So, so I just want to tell you, like, that stuff really works. I went for a scan, and I, I have to tell you, I was nervous. I was nervous because it's like I haven't had it in many years. I used to have nodules. I kind of know that I don't. I don't think I, I didn't feel like I had nodules, but I was expecting some tissue damage because Hashimoto's does launch an active attack on the thyroid. And as much as my antibodies are super low, right, I've got like from over a thousand, I got it down to 66. I still have something going on, the H. pylori EBV thing. It's there, I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm going to share with you guys what, what it worked for me. But, you know, you and I are kind of complicated cases. For a lot of people, it's just like boom, 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 five changes and things, things right. work. And so I got, I, you know, I was so nervous going for the scan of the thyroid. And she, and she, and she had this huge monitor, right? And she showed me like the lobe and because it was, it was enlarged. And she said, wow, that's a beautiful thyroid. Oh, I, I was like, oh. <laughs> you know, so I just want to share with you, like that stuff just works. And it works with med with with nutrients, the right nutrients for your diet, with supporting your gut, supporting your liver changes in diet. Um, and Boomer is here. So yeah, so let's uh, maybe just do one more question and then we start wrapping up, you guys. Um, so let's see, Melissa is asking, well, this, maybe let's do a couple more. Valentina is asking, does the protocol gonna help her with panic attacks? Oh my goodness, panic attacks. Uh they're actually one of the biggest things that we see that reduces with the protocol. So, um, so depression and panic attacks are one of the first things that go away. I used to have horrific panic attacks for quite some time. Mm. And going through, like supporting my liver, supporting my adrenals, that was a biggie. And getting on a selenium supplement, that was part of my healing journey. When you go through the adrenal protocol, you're going to see, like, you're going to be like, Oh, I used to be anxious. Like I used to have panic attacks. It's amazing because I think back on who I used to be, and I used to be this like high strung and really anxious um, person. And I'm just pretty laid back and chill. Like I'm laughing all the time, you know. Like I'm like, hey, we're having a good time. Like things let, don't let, stress let me out. Let me tell you, we've been prepping up this whole thing for today, and I was like, you know, we mm -hmm. have no time. But like, her, da, da, da. and she's like, da 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 da. Yeah, in the kitchen. <laughs> I was like, I was telling <laughs> jokes, and yeah, chatting, and like, no, yeah. it's focus. Uh, another one, really, really important. Melissa is asking. I have Hashimoto's. My TSH was. Um, optimal last blood test uh, three months ago, but the antibodies were really high. Does the book help you with lowering the antibodies? Great question. Oh my gosh, yeah, that, that's a huge, huge thing. And that was one of my biggest things because I had antibodies in the 2000 plus range and that's a big focus of the book. So once you go through the fundamental protocols, we've seen a significant amount of people, I believe it's something like 60% see a significant reduction in both TPO and TG antibodies. Once you go through the advanced protocols, you should be able to eliminate those into the remission range. Um, that's my goal for every person that goes through this book. And I've got, you know, H. pylori protocol. H. Yeah. pylori can actually cause you to have Graves and Hashimoto's antibodies. And we've seen whenever we get rid of that, the antibodies go down and they go significantly down um, with time. Mm. Um, so within the first month, you'll probably see them going into half. And then as we go moving on, you know, you keep monitoring them, you, you may actually just lose them completely. Last question, uh, somebody, well actually, gosh, you guys are going to some really yeah, great, questions. great questions. And this is like, I want to say yes, 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 yes to everything. But so Condon is asking, basically she's saying, or he's saying, I'm not sure, I'm not, unable to do a lot of protocols because I have a lot of intolerance sensitivities to a lot of healthy food supplements. I have reactions to vitamin C, iodine, which you shouldn't be doing when you have Hashimoto's, green superfoods, spirulina, garlic, lemon. What could this be because of my liver? Yes, you're like, you know, you're the person that I wrote this book for because I had all these clients that just were not getting better with everything, all the wonderful information that was out there. And so you're my ideal person because you're, you're not detoxing properly and you've got all these things that are causing problems within your body. Um, so you will want to do the liver support protocol, <clears throat> anything that you're sensitive to. So for example, lemons, citrus sensitivity can be an issue for some people um, as a food intolerance you're gonna to wanna to get rid of the lemons, but there's gonna be a ton of other resources 
can deliver support protocol that are going to help you significantly. So, um, you know, we, we shared about the lemons, but that's just a small part of the yep. protocol. So I think this will really, really help you. I'd love, you know, I'd love if you posted back and let us know how you felt within one to two weeks of doing it. I think you'll be able to tolerate the supplements and foods much better. This is what I've seen time and time again. Yeah. One last, very last question, really important one to, will this book help with thyroid cancer? Um, so this book hasn't been designed specifically for thyroid cancer, or um, but what we have seen is with thyroid nodules, following the protocols in this book, we do see thyroid nodules going away. Um, and I've seen this time and time again. It was a surprise to me at first. Um, the other thing is we see thyroid antibodies going away. The TG thyroid antibodies are going to be related to thyroid cancer, and we have been able to reduce significantly and eliminate the TG antibodies following these protocols. So this will reduce your <coughs> chances of cancer. Um, the other thing too is if you already have had your thyroid removed because of thyroid cancer, this will give you the tools to rebalance your body so that you don't get another autoimmune condition, um, an immune system related condition, and so that you have the proper hormonal balance on board because whenever you get your thyroid gland removed, you have to really focus on getting thyroid hormones optimized. So I hope that helps. I definitely, um, you know, recommend that you check it out and see if it helps you on your journey. I don't know what part of the journey you're in. So you may need some additional things too. Yeah. Awesome. Yay. Thank you. Yeah. This Aww. is a lot of fun. Aww. Thank you so Aww. much. I have to say, I was a little bit nervous cooking with you because you're such <laughs> a pro in the kitchen. A little, little because that's what I do. And, yes. and you did yes. so well. It was just like, Thank man, you. This, Hey, you guys, so like my teas, whoops, Cheers. almost gone, almost done. Uh, I just loved it so much. It was really, it's, it's really good. And you could modify it to your taste. Thanks, thanks you guys. Thanks for, uh, for those of you who've been supporting. I, I see there's a lot of, um, a lot of uh, comments coming in that you guys are getting it on, on Amazon. Thank you for that. Thank you so much for the support. And uh, I hope you try some of those things because that stuff really works. It really helps. Um, and like I said, not just for thyroid, it's for anybody else who's got other hormonal issues going on. Um, any other parting thoughts that you want to just add on to this? Mm, no, thank you so much for having me. And for everybody listening, I just really hope that you take the time for your own healing. I'm really yeah. proud of you for being here with us and yeah. taking this time for yourself and make yourself a priority because you know what? Nobody else will really treat you as well as you can treat yourself. Yeah, and that's so true. You can get your health back this way. This is this is the key to what Magdalena and I both had to do. Yeah, hallelujah. And that's why we do this. I do this on Friday so you can take the time on Saturday and Sunday and do some little planning, reading, stocking up, going shopping, getting a massage, whatever whatever um, is what that you, which, which, which you need. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you need. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks so much, you guys. Have Bye, a guys. lovely weekend, and I'll talk to you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Oh, let's see.